Okay. So, the whole reason why I'm doing 50,000 cuts is because one cut I had gotten the wrong book. And I had gotten volume 4 of a series instead of volume 1. This is a library haul, by the way. It might go over books like reading this week and most of the library. You get, you get, you get a point. You get a point. Alright, so I picked up the wrong volume of Transmetropolitan like an idiot. Because I, I, so this is the reread, I've read this series before, so I could just read this as is and just catch myself up as I read along. Be like, okay, this is what happened here, this is what happened there, but I don't want to do that. I want to start at volume one, like I'm, re like I'm reading it for the first time, technically, not really. Now they have volume one on the Kindle for free for Prime members, which is awesome, so I can read volume one and for volumes two and three, get it at my local library, which, uh, interloans, I mean, interloans and local, local library for this, and yada, yada, so forth, will be all good. So, all that's good, you know, whatever, but, you know, it's still kind of annoying. Now, another thing that happened today, because th this, this whole li the whole library trip today has been, like, failure to failure. First of all, I was supposed to get Age of X-Men today, well, supposed to get today. Doing the math, I've never gotten, to, I've never had to wait this long, in a long, long time, for a book to come in. So I thought it'd come in today. Well, not today, but yesterday for today. Because sometimes, I, I thought they'd be, I thought, I thought it'd be a day late, too, along with another book I thought I would get, and I did technically get, called A History of Violence by John Wagner. I'd see, I'd watch a movie, read like the movie, want to read the comic now. And I put in the graphic novel for solicits, it comes in as not supplied. And so, I'm, I'm gonna name the librarians, but I'm, I'm just gonna refer to them as Librarian A and Librarian B. I don't want to name them, obviously. Uh, no, matter, no matter what, I just want to name them. So I go to Librarian A, and I say, Hey, why is this, this, why did this book show up as not supplied? Now, I thought one of two things going in. Number one, it, would, it was just a glitch on their system, and either way, it was a glitch on their system. And it would not, actually, no, not other way. Yeah, either way, it was a glitch on their system, and either it would be checked out for me, they just, they, just forgot, they just forgot the hit checked out, or it was had been checked out yet, and they just forgot about it, or whatever the hell, or just hadn't been checked out. It was two days, by the way, that it was it was not supplied. That's never happened before. It's never been that long. So I ask her, and I'm like, "What's going on?" And she says, "Oh, the library that 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 means that the library that had it doesn't actually have it. It's their mistake." And I'll take it off your account. If you don't have it, sorry. I'm like, oh, all right. So I get my books, the wrong trans metropolitan, and I leave. When I get home, guess what gets checked out to my guess? What, guess what gets checked out to me? A history of violence. I have a history of violence by, uh, not sorry, did I say Matt Wagner. It's John Wagner, not Matt Wagner. There's so many Wagners in in comics today. It's like 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 the Lees, Jim Lee, Stan Lee, Jay Lee. So you, when you, if you have the last name of someone else, you should probably like. I don't know. Like, no, actually, what you should do is, you, is when it goes Wagner, Esquio, uh, Lee, it should be J, uh, J, J dot Wagner and J dot Lee. Although Jim Lee and J Lee are his first initial, so. Okay. Well, now, I don't know. Maybe, maybe write your full name on the cover? Because sometimes I like to do that thing where it's Wagner, Espio, Lee, you know, and the last name. So they want someone, they want someone like me to pick up a Fantastic Four book thinking it's written by Stan Lee, but it's drawn by Jim Lee. That's happened before, by the way. But anyways, so as I was saying, so... The, the History of Violence by Matt, uh, John Wagner gets checked out to me. Like, it was there the whole entire time, because it was. So I'm kind of pissed off. I call the library, and I'm like, hey, what's going on? Why is... What, what happened? Why was... What, and I explained what happened. I was like, what's going on now? It's like, oh, yeah, I got checked out. Yeah, I guess, sorry, yada, yada. Um, I'll let Librarian B know. Librarian B is the one that take, takes care of all the interlibrary loans. The one that actually knows what the hell is going on. So, long story short, she's she just going to take it back. So I, I can't get there. I'm not going to bug anybody to take me a day later after I just went. So it's like, whatever. It's one book. If it was, if it was, one, if it was both that and Age of X, yeah, I would try, I'd try and go in tomorrow or early next week or whatever. But they're, they're just going to return it. I'll resubmit it next time. Still pissed off, though. All right, anyways, now let's get on with the rest of the books. Tangent over. Now, in place of that um, trans metropolitan book, I am going to reread... Hawkeye versus Deadpool. Why not? I'm, I'm reading a lot of Hawkeye recently. A lot of Hawkeye recently. I reread the Hawkeye Freefall Matt, Matthew Rosenberg book that I really liked. 
And it's been a while since I reread this. And it's also technically part of Jerry Duggan's Deadpool run, so technically I should have read it um, after I read the reread his run. But here it is. I'll 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 reread re that in place of. Uh, and now when I say in place of Trans Metropolitan, well that's because of the fact that I like to have the same amount of physical books regardless of where I got them per week. So some from the library and some from my some from my personal collection. Worst case, and this is a worst case situation. I like to all be. Uh, on a good week, it's all library books, and, I, and then if I, I finish two out of the twenty-five, I'll, I'll fill in the gap with two. You'll see one. In the, you'll see one book, and then fill in the gap with two. But for the most part, just that. You know, I actually want to do this. Put that to the side. Don't read that one. All right. So yes, Hawkeye Deadpool, I will be reading. I'm gonna, I just said, oh, I'll put that to the side. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. Um, it's just one I put to the side. Then we got Spider Gwen. This is the Jason Lone Tour book. I got the smaller size trade paperback um, because it's two, it's two volumes. It's, it's volumes one and two, all packaged, packaged into one. And I don't really mind that it's that much smaller than your average size trade paperback. It's like, whatever. If I bought it myself, it would be, it'd be a different story. Then we have All-Star Batman by Scott Snyder, volume two. And much like with volume one, volume two also... Um, uh, uh, still on rereads, by the way. Uh, volume two also has the all the backup per issue at the back. It's not issue six and it's backup and so on and so forth. No, it's issues six to ten, then the backups for issues six to ten. And I, I'm gonna have to consult my um, my. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to sail the high. I'm gonna have to sail the seven seas to know where I stop with, to know where the next um backup story start and then ends, you know. That's the only reason why I'm using that website, by the way. I don't usually sail the seven high seas. I hate, I hate doing that. Especially because the websites I use are terrible. Secret Avengers, Volume 1 by A.L. Scott, or, or, or Ali Scott, I say Ali Scott, but the first time I got an Ali Scott book, I referred to him as A.L. Scott, and I can't get that out of my head now. Um, so Ali Scott... This is the I, I mentioned I mentioned this book a bunch of times before because I, whenever I see whenever I am talking about Ellie Cott, I always say that one of the only books that I've read by him is his Secret Avengers run. And the one thing I really hated about it was that I was like, oh nice, my phone didn't even let me hit twice. What the heck? Now I'm gonna say who was calling me. Oh, there we go. Decline. There we go, okay. It was a scam caller. I really gotta get rid of those people. It's one of those people that they, they'll call you on multiple phone numbers. And with one, it'll be 822-4555, and then it'll be 69698444, you know? And you'll be like, okay. Or, no, it's similar, so it'll be like a few numbers off. So I, I mean, when I just said it made, it made no sense. But it'll be multiple phone numbers, if I'm trying to say. But it'll be similar, so you'll know. So you can't you can't block them all. Is the same point. But anyways, Secret Adventures. The one thing I really hate about this run, or did, did what my big my biggest downside was the comedy. But I like the lineup. It's a lot of D list superheroes that don't link that don't really get to uh, don't get much screen time in the on the in the original Avengers books and the ongoing Avengers. The, uh, no, the original the the main Avengers book. It's so the main Avengers title, so they get their own little. It's nice. I, I, I like that. But the comedy was very annoying. But I'm thinking that uh, my uh, hope is that this time I read it, it won't it won't annoy me as much. I know I know what it is going into. You know what? You know what? I, I know what I'm going into. When I read this is what I'm trying to say. So I I know what I'm in for basically. He's saying the same thing four thousand times. You guys know what I mean, but I feel the need to just say it five thousand times apparently. Next up, we have Wayward Volume Three. See what I really liked. Um, and so far, I liked it just as much as I did the first time. So far. Uh, yeah, none, none of these I've read yet. Except for one, technically. Um, Doctor Strange. Well, no, no. Sorry. For the, for the, uh, these all... The first 12 are rereads. But... But... The... Um, I'm re I haven't read them for a second time or third time, fourth time yet. And you guys know what I mean. Like, the next time I've read it, you know. I have not cracked open these yet today. There we go. That was what I meant to say. Alright. Next up is Doctor Strange, Volume 2. 
No, I, I had read volume two. Volume two, read volume two. I've also read. I, I volume one was on the Kindle for free. It was on. It was back in the pandemic. Marvel was like, hey, here's some free books. That and talk, Doctor Strange volume one was one. And I read volume one just a few days ago. Finished it just a few days, just yesterday, and I like it better than I did the first time, which is. Another thing I've, I've got to mention in the first cut, so that's a uh, guys. It's another plus, I guess. But yeah, I liked it a lot better than the first time. Uh, the first time I just I expected it. I guess I, guess I just expected it to be a lot bigger than it was. It's Jason Aaron, Doctor Strange. A lot of people make connections to it to it be to it being like his Thor run. So I'm like, oh, like that run. Oh, okay. So it's gonna be this big, isn't it? And I'm like, uh, no, not really. I mean, yeah, kind of a little bit. A lot of stuff happens in this run. A lot of big things, but not, eh, not really, and I, I guess I, I just expected it to be a lot better than it actually was, but rereading it for the second time, I, rereading it for the second time, I like a lot more, and now I understand why this is one of the best Doctor Strange runs, and so far it's my favorite. Then we got Batman and Robin, Volume 3, of the Grant Morrison run, and I do have, uh, Volume 4, at my lo at local library into Lone Street Milks, but um, it's not written by Grant Morrison. It's written by Peter J. Tomasi, and that goes into their new new Fifty Two run. I'm like, do I really need to get that? Because I'm just gonna be even more tempted to get the Omnibus. So I'm like, eh, probably not. Probably hold off on that. Although it didn't, they say issue twenty, and this one is close to sixteen, right? Let's see. Let's double check. I could be wrong. I think it's, if anything, 16 to 19. I swear to God they have, but yep, nope, it's 13 to 16. So yeah, 17 to 20, I guess. But I thought it was 2022 on the, in the omnibus. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe those slices are wrong that I saw online. Maybe, maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Uh, Ms. Marvel Volume 2 of Sheldon Ahmed's run. Now, I, this is one of those books that is a great example of how lenient I am with books. Because something like with, um, because no one seems to like Ms. Marvel as a character or her book, or the book she is in. And I do. So, that's a great example. And of course, I like something, I also will always say that, like, Preacher's a lot better, obviously. Transfer Metropolitan's a lot better. You know, I can understand why you don't like these books, yada yada. But I still do. You know, it's still enjoyable enough for me to recommend it when I talk, when I review it. At least so far with the G, especially with the G. Willow Wilson run. Closest thing we got into an indie book from, from, uh, Marvel for a long time. The last thing was like, what, Runaways? Or, I, I heard Next Wave was also pretty indie, it has a nice indie feel to it. And there's probably more that I haven't read, but so far, yeah, just those, just those few. Batman Night of the Monster Man. For whatever reason, I thought I, I didn't think I'd put this up today, but I did. I was like, oh, hey, I thought I, I, thought I, I, thought I uh, had to put that one back because I didn't have one. On, I thought I had to sacrifice that one because um, I had too much. I had too much checked out already. Then we have Batgirl, Birds and Prey. Again, other than that one thing that really made me mad, it was basically it was. All three of these characters are sitting on the couch, and Green Arrow texts Black Canary, and Black Canary just says, You know what? I'm not... And actually, it was even worse, because Green Arrow was wondering where the hell Black Canary even, even is. Because she he hasn't heard from him in a long time, and anxious they just got back from, like, a big ol', uh... Hull, hull blue, and they're, like, you know, life life-threatening junk. And so Green Arrow is, uh, is understandably concerned, and he texts her, "Where are you?" And Barbara, Bar, uh, not Barbara. I, I don't know if they say it to her or what she says to herself, but basically she comes to the conclusion, "Well, I'm not gonna text you because you took forever to ask me out, so screw you." And I'm like, "Wow, like that is next level scummy." And of course, you know she can do it because she's a woman, and it's 2015. Well, no, sorry, it's 2016 when this book came out, so she's allowed to do that. And also, it was um, it wasn't just that. It was also just it's also just the fact that like, if Green Arrow did that to her, that would be like the top worst things Green Arrow has ever done. And it'd be in all the Watch Mojo, What Culture, Looper, CBR, all those videos. It would be like 
such a controversial thing, and then with Black Canary, he won't even be in the top 400 worst things he's done. Like, they will do, like, they will scrape the bottom of the barrel before they even say anything bad about this precious run that's... Because remember, comments are booming. It's, it, that, that mentality I really hate. Like, that, that's one of the things where I understand why people, like, hate comics nowadays, is there's a lot of that junk in comics today, from what I've heard. Again, not getting, not getting, uh, weekly comic books, uh, the floppies anymore. I will check out that when they come out on trades, probably, but when they come out on trades, probably, but even then, am I really gonna want to spend that much money for a digital trade or a trade it by itself? Probably not. I'll probably just do the ones that I'm getting, like the ongoing stuff, I feel like really, I really feel the need to, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Avengers World, this is the spin off, I guess you could say. I, I like it's a reread too. I really liked it the first time I read it, it just been a long time since I've read it. Um, the main reason for why it is is because it was kind of like you had to read, kind of sort of had to read the Avengers run that was going, all the other Avengers runs, and I feel like I should get all those and then read this along with it. I was like, eh, you, should, you don't really have to, and you can just read this as it is. I wasn't, I wasn't too terribly confused. And it, it wasn't just because of that, it was also that I wanted to get everything Avengers, like, the completest of me wanted to do that, and then I'd read this along with it, you know, as I was reading. So, but... No, I'm not going to do that, probably. That's not going to happen. Okay, so now we're done with all the rereads. So now the next few are all brand spanking new. Never, never read them before. First up is, this is one I've started reading so far. And that's Batman Arkham Unhinged, Volume 2. I really dug Volume 1. Volume 1 was just, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't as good as Batman Hush or Batman Dark Knight's Dark Knight Returns. It's not an groundbreaking, underrated Batman comic. It's just a above-average Batman comic. That above-average, licensed, licen licensed Batman comic. Then we got another one that is going to be, is gonna be uh, I, I own, that I'm reading for the first time. Got one of those things, and that's style H for Hero. Um, I was going to try and read the new, new 52 run first, but then, yeah, who cares? And what was I going to say? There was something else I wanted to mention. What else was it? Oh, but this one I'll be doing, like, like say, because some of these that I have are only four issues, but not all of them are. It's like two or three that are, so I'll just be, in place of one of those, I'll be doing this, and then I'll be, re and I'll be reading two of Avengers World per day. And maybe two per day of the next one. Now, the next one is by an author so controversial that I think even the most jaded of comic book youtubers would agree that this guy's a bad egg and that and but he's written a comic that i've always in passing want to check out but after hearing about all these controversies he's like actually threatening people online i'm like hey let's see how good your book actually is so if you say and so if you get into a fight with somebody and i'm involved somehow and you say you've never read my book i say yeah i have hey i've read you're the pride from by Joe Glass, and not just because of that. It's also because of my I'm so lenient with Ms. Marvel. I I, I mean, like Ms. Marvel. I, I can usually ignore the oh, this person said a really bad thing online, threatened this guy. I'm like, yeah, it's the ter it's terrible. Obviously, no, no shit. But I'm gonna ignore it. You know, I I, I don't I don't want to get involved basically, and I just want to judge you as a writer, not as a person, because. I, I never judge people as people. I judge them as writers. I don't know you personally. I'm not going to judge you as a person, for the most part. And of course, there's are, there are um, exceptions, obviously, like like Hitler and um, all those all those really bad people. But, you know, you get the point. And also, like, the reason why I want to finally... The reason, one of the only reasons I'd ever read Mein Kampf is to see how good... It's, 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 it's part of history, you know? And this... This is a part of comics history. The writer, at least. So. This is Joe Glass's Mein Kampf. Uh, I guess. Totally spaced out on where I was, what, uh, Kyle to put them in. Next up is the Unwritten Volume 3. Really like this theory so far. Volume 2 is a lot better than Volume 1. And hopefully there's not, you know, I'm going to flip through it as... Uh, so, so far, it doesn't look like there's any, like, articles. Do it have, like, little articles in... Oh, they have one, at least, I think. Um, they have, like, little articles. No, I think I, I think I saw that by mistake. 
But they'd have like little articles and news articles on the computer and like you know so social media junk to make the to make the to flesh out the world to make it feel more realistic and like this could actually happen in real life. You know, if magic were real, is what I'm trying to say. I'm still trying to say it's probably mean. Um, so yeah, I understand why you do do that. That makes sense. I mean, and it kind of does date you because. A lot of these websites are not up anymore, and you're obviously making fun of this. I'm not making fun. Obviously, a parody version of this website and the UI, is it UI, like the you know, like the how YouTube looks, how YouTube the search bar for instance, or the how we used to have stars on, like the, the, the website looks. Basically, what I'm trying to say the interface. You know, um, it's obviously an older version of this website. So other than that, it does still feel like it's a, it's a real world. So you get, I, I get why you're doing that. It makes sense. Flesh out your world, but it's, it's just annoying. Because there was so much, a lot of reading from that. It was a lot of text. Basically, like, reading um, an entire article, basically. Yeah, it got annoying. It was, it was only one page. It was, it was never like, a dull page spread, which I give credit, credit where credit's due. But again, still annoying. Still irritating. Next up, we have Stephanie Phillips' Nuclear Family. Now, one of the people I follow and agree with more than I disagree with, but it's like 60-50 at this point, because a lot of the books he's hated that I have given, given a chance to, I really liked. Great example being Crowded and Ms. Marvel and a lot of these books. And he says that Stephanie Phillips is the chat GPT of modern comic book pros. And basically, basically what he means by that is she goes on to chat GPT, says, give me a post-apocalyptic storyline, give me some dialogue, give me what's going to happen in the plot, all that, and then she'll just take what ChatGPT gives her and use that, like, word for word. I want to see if the, I want to see that's true. If I feel the same way. I mean, not that that's true, because it probably is true, and, and for him, you know, it's him, it's his, his opinion, obviously. I want to see that if I, if I feel the same way. Because he really hates Ms. Marvel. He really hates the Ms. Marvel uh, G. Willow Wilson run. And I don't. So, it's one of those things where I'm like, if I, okay, if I, if I disagree with you on this, I'm going to disagree with you on that. That's, that's, not, that's another reason why I got Joe Glass as the pride, because everyone seems to hate it on that, on, on, well, on any side, honestly. No one seems to even know about it, and that it exists. Oh, side note for the pride, it's a Comixology original, so I could have gotten it for free on Prime on the Kindle, and I just found out, like, a few, a few days ago, when I already had the book. Whoopsie. Ledger 44, Volume 2. Feels really weird holding Volume 2 of this series in my hand, because I never thought I would, because I didn't like Volume 1 the first time I read it. I did a lot more the second time around. Even the second time around, the first few issues, I was like, yep, this is just as boring as I remember it being, if not more. But then it got, like, really interesting. I was like, well, look, who's the idiot now? Me. For not, uh, giving it a second chance sooner. Next up is yet another, they said this was bad, but I want to check it out for myself, and that is Static Shock Season 1 by Fida Ayala. Now this is one where I'll only check it out if, this is my, this is, this is a good example of my, I'll only check it out if my library has it. Um, that's one, that's one of these. Fida Ayala, I, I, I did like her Morbius run. I, I didn't get like more have I actually, have I actually read anything by Vita Ayala I haven't liked? There's not, there's not a lot, so I don't think I've read everything she's read. Um, I liked her Morbius run. I really can't think of anything else by her I've read. I tend to avoid really bad, really, really, really bad writers like her. Like, ones that everyone hates and, like, like astoundingly so and they, and they would say basically they basically it's implied that they'd rather read Ms. Marvel and all these other books that they didn't like that much because they like that so they'll get more they'll more positive to say basically they have more positive to say about Ms. Marvel than um and anything that Vita Ayala has written like this is the bottom of the barrel for Vita Ayala Vita Ayala so that's, that's the main reason why main, main reason why but she didn't do one like it wasn't Hex Square what is that she did like I think it's for saying I hope it wasn't for Valiant because they don't like Valiant but she wrote her own superhero. She wrote yeah, as a creator, creator owned book. Next up is Star Wars Legacy Volume nah, 8. Now, this is right after the first. Was, this is the first. 
next two issues after the first two epic collections. They didn't have volume three, at least I didn't see it. Maybe I should have checked to make sure. No, I think it was just the first two. I, I think I did my usual author series thing, so I know, you know. But yes, this. Uh, so next, uh, next two up, it's kind of funny. So first up is Max Visaggio's Kim and Kim. The reason why I got this book is main reason why I got this book is to see if, if um, Uja Uja, which I actually liked, is that that's like one of her one of Max Visaggio's better better books. Well, it's one of her worst books that you know again people like Gifford exactly he like absolutely despised. Um, you know let's. See how that is, and, and it's more, more than just him. Just some guy hates it too, and just some guy you see is e even more level-headed than your boy Zach, which is saying a lot because you're unfair, level-headed and fair. And Zach, Zach, your boy Zach is so damn fair now, especially now. Like he's changed like drastically, and even back then he wasn't too bad. Like he was, he would, he if someone was absolutely freaking out about a book and yelling at, yelling at their cam, yelling at their microphone, he would just be like talking more like this. Sometimes he get a little bit angrier, but he never, like, I, I, I never heard him, like, yelling at the top of his lungs like some of these other guys would do. For a reason, you know, they, they weren't over overacting or anything. They actually felt that passionate about it, but still yelling, you know. He, he, he'll calm down, basically, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But along with Kim and Kim, I also got Kim Reaper. I, I saw I saw my local library. It's like, nah, why not? Kind of funny. Both Kim books. Two Kim books. And also, Kim and, uh, Kim Reaper... It's just amphibia ass artwork. It makes it look like a baby book. By that, I mean a little, little kid book. An actual baby book. Didn't mean, didn't mean that's insults, I meant to say. So the next one kind of pisses me off. Now, this is Cannibal Volume 1, written by Brian Bucolato. It's an image book, and guess what's not on his official image website? Oh, this! Image Comics is just so weird. I, I think their their failure record of not still, not citing everything a guy has written and it's not that much more some of them like it's like a few more they just don't have written down it's just it's weird i don't know why no it's not just, it's not because it's an older book that one was like 2017 when that tree came out and it was 2017 first printing too um it's not because it's an older book because they have stuff from 2009 primarily the sword it's not because he's an, he's an under he's not a well-known writer no and they saw they have books by him that are that they cite no, it's not because they haven't updated in a long time. They have new books there, too. Like, new, new books haven't come out yet there, too. Just makes no sense to me, but whatever. Next up, we have Batgirls by Becky Cloonan, or or Cloonrad as... It's, it's Michael Conrad, too. Or Cloonrad as uh, Thinking Critical calls them. Now, this is one that, again, everyone hated. I want to give my two cents on. I, I, I just want to check it out, too, just to see what all the fuss is about. It does seem like it's not, even all hate. It does kind of feel seem like I even I'm gonna hate it because one of the complaints that it was too juvenile and I was like, oh, you mean like the post New Fifty Two Batgirl run? Yay! I want to be reminded of how much I hated that run the second time I, the second time I read it. It was a Cameron Stewart run. It was just like because the Gail Simone run, which is which is the for which is the main New Fifty Two run, that was so damn good. That was like. It was like um, dark, surprisingly dark. It was everything a Batgirl book should be, honestly, or it's in comics in general. And then she got booed off because of controversy. I'm not gonna get into. I'm just tired. <laughs> just thinking about all that just, cause it just makes me tired now. It's just like I don't, I don't care anymore. And I, I don't want to regurgitate things that have a lot of backstory to them. Kind of like, because then I'm gonna talk about that and to bring up this. It's just like a just look look it up, please. Uh, so yes, Batgirls by. Clinton. And this is about the fall. It's lopsided. Uh, that's why. Okay, so that's like that, and that's like this. And you can tell that a lot of these books I got were because I got books I, 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 I got in uh, Southern Cross by by Becky Clunan and so on and so forth. And uh, Sons of the Devil by what's his face now this next one is by Brian Bucolato and this next one is Man Eaters by Chelsea Kane a book so bad that even near my condition didn't like it and near my condition and I seem to be I think he's more he's even more lenient than I am with books like he is he, he he likes comics he doesn't he's not too picky but even he didn't care for this book now 
on the back end, I want to check it out. I want to see all the fuss about it. See if this is absolutely, see if this is like the worst thing in the world. Um, just like a lot of, you can tell it's one of these books. So, no, I can't, I can't, I can't do it, I'm sorry. My finger is going to cover some of the art. There we go. There we go. Um, so, on the back here is a very interesting quote from a Simpsons writer. Or, yeah, writer. And it says, and, and, and I quote, from Bill Oakley. Uh, As a white middle-aged male and firmly established member of the patriarchy, I cannot and will not endorse this book. Don't read it or give it to anyone you care about. Is that, is that sarcastic, or is Chelsea Kane doing a gotcha moment, uh, outing this guy, or, um, not outing, but, uh, exposing this guy? I couldn't tell. And of course, of course, as to be expected with this kind of book, Kelly Sudaconic says it's brilliant. Of course you'd say that. That says, that says, um, obvious, it's, it's, it's more obvious than just anything, honestly. There's nothing I can I can compare it to. Like that's so obvious for that's so what's the word? Not obvious, but it's so predictable that even the dumbest person can, would be able to tell you that. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Of course, you'd like it. Nothing I'm against her herself, but it's spread up her alley. It's like me saying that a preacher book was good. That preacher, like, the next volume of Preacher was really damn good and, and, and groundbreaking. Yeah, no shit. Uh, next up is Dan Panosian's Alice Ever After, a book so new that I didn't think I'd be able to get it. It was 2023, and even now it being, like, six months into the year, like, halfway into the year, I always think I'm not gonna get a book that's this new from 2023, unless I wait a little, a little while, but they had this right away. I got it. Uh, this is Dan Panosian's Alice Ever After, and just another, another thing I'm going to mention. No, I have one of the very few uh, Dan Panosian written books they had. Maybe, maybe it's one of the very few books he's written. But that and Sloss are the only two books by Dan Panosian I can actually say, yes, they're written by Dan Panosian. Now, is it also artwork by him? Let's see. Nope. No, created by, written by. And London Illustrated and Wonderland. No, w Wonderland is illustrated by him, though. So I guess they have like a London, London parts, parts that are set in London and parts that are set in Wonderland. So yes, technically is done by, te technically does the artwork. Nice. I do like his artwork. I've seen some covers he's done, like uh, when I, like at the end of like a Batman book from Rebirth, they'd have like they'd have all the variant covers, and he do some variant covers. Like, pretty, pretty good. I, I, I like his artwork. I actually think they're older than that too. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Next up is a book that I was gonna get on my birthday. It wasn't too it wasn't too expensive. I, I could have gotten it, and no, no matter what, it was five bucks on at uh, why pay more online. But I decided to hell with it. I'm gonna get my local library. I, I looked it up to see that my local library, and sure enough, and then it's local library, G Mokes, Interloans, and sure enough, they had From Under Mountains by Claire G by Claire Gibson, a writer I have no idea. I've never heard of her before, at all. And art and colors by Stone Leon. Now, I got, I, got a, I got a major, the first time I was going over these books, I got a major sense of deja vu on the back here, and I was like, is that because I actually own this book and I'm so stupid that I forgot that I actually own it? But I think what it was is I kept looking at the back of it when I was looking at it uh, on Amazon. Because sometimes I like look at the back, they'll have like the front page and the back page, or the front cover, back cover. Sometimes they don't, and it's really annoying. Like, sometimes I want to know what the genre is, because Image Comics, they'll have it on the pack right here. Like, see? Right here. Fantasy. Whoops. Fantasy. Uh, there we go. I hope you can see it. You know? It's like... Maybe, maybe want to know. Or what the rating is. Or what the actual list price is. Because Amazon, sometimes, if their book is out of print, like with, like, a, like with that aforementioned Hawkeye Freefall book, that's thirty four ninety nine. On Amazon right now, it's like thirty four ten or something like that. But that's only because of the fact that it's out of print. The list price is fifteen ninety nine, and they don't want you knowing that. So they'll either censor the censor the like they'll put it behind like these copyright things or like put behind other writings so you won't know. So you buy the book and you're like, oh wow. 
And it's probably not their fault. They probably didn't do that on purpose, but... Eh, did they, though? It's one of those things. Then we got... Oh, good. Now it's steel. Steel, it's a group text. And finally, last but not least, Dirtbag Rapture by Chris Arisabala. I'm hoping this will be... The, hoping this will be the, um... Thumbnail. My Dirtbag Rapture by Christopher Sabala. Christopher Sabala is already a writer I know I'll like, because I read the first issue of his Kraven series. I really liked it. Again, it has, it has issues, but, you know, who cares? It was one of those things where I can get over it, you know? Again, like with Secret Avengers, I hope the next time I read that series, and again, I, I only read issue one so far of Crowded, I'm hoping that when I, when I read it again, it won't bother me. The downsides won't bother me as much as I did the first time. But we shall see. And that, as I say, is that. Uh, the fat stack of books. How many How many in all? Because I want to know. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. I'm right. Okay, good. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can leave now if you don't want to know the number. Ten. Wait. Oh, I see it again. Sorry. No, I'll do it this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 books. It's a lot of books. But one of them doesn't count, so technically 29. That, as I say, is that. Now, I'm going to, um, because I like to, I sometimes I'll have, like, some surprise books. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to do that, because I kind of, I feel like it's kind of weird to do that, but. So, whatever, if I, have, if I have a surprise book, I'll show it off, like, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a post or whatever. Um, because, because, you know, because, again, like I said before, what I'll do is, like, say, Let's say Batman. Let's say Batman and Dial H for Hero had four issues per. I feed those. I feed. I read those four issues because I was the only two that have four issues. So then they have two open slots. Might as well just two open two two new books. Actually, no wait. Until I tell I'm not gonna do that because I because I gotta. I'm gonna have to read um as soon as possible. Read two of Avengers World and. Just Avengers World? And maybe the Pride uh, per day. I think it was just Avengers World. Avengers World is over 20 issues in that thick ass hardcover, uh, soft cover. So, you know, that is a good price, even if it is $44.99. Actually, how much is it? It's, it's an older book, so it shouldn't be that expensive. It's that soon. Let's see. Wow, $39.99. Now, that's a damn good price. It is kind of a fun part, though. But that's because it's a library book, not because of the ability of the actual book itself. Okay, that's it. Goodbye. I need to get my book. Well, actually, we're 38 minutes in. Let's get to 40 minutes so I can, uh, <laughs> I'll prattle on a little bit. Now, when is the next comic haul going to be? Mm, probably not next week. I'm hoping for next next week, so, you know, the following week from now, when I go to the, the library, too, so I'll get two in one. So, when we going to do videos next week? I don't know. I'll do, like, uh... So, one of the... I, I just shared a post the other day. So, this, you know, this is a good thing to, that I remember to, to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Um, so, the other day, I, re, I released a post that I was complaining about... Well, I'll, I'll say complaining. I'll, I, I, it won't be around the bush. I was complaining about my most recent um, complete monthly haul. That was for May. Going over 73 books took me an hour. That... And I get it, you know, four issues of zero. I'm not going to go over each volume. Because I, I said on average, when I was going over it um, in my head, so I'll, I'll do that for bigger videos like that. I'm like, okay, you need to talk about this, talk about that, write that down, yada, 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 yada. I have a script that I go by sometimes. I just write down, I write down my notes. But 73 times 2 is 146. 146 minutes. That's two and a half. Oh my God, it's two and a half hours. It's been at least two hours. Even with it being like, oh, well, this is a four-volume series. You're not going to talk about each volume for two minutes. Nah, not really. And I just thought it would be a lot easier to do that. But, yeah. So maybe next week I'll do, like, a revamp of that video. 
keep the original up, but it's like a, it's like a redux where I go in depth in, yeah, it's two and a half hours. So I'll go in depth to, no, it's not two and a half hours, it's two hours and 20 minutes, sorry. Basically two and a half hours. Uh, but I go more in depth, you know, be like, okay, um, take the redux, and I go more in depth, I'm like, this is why I got this book, this is why I got that book. I mean, even then, I don't know. Kind of feels stupid to do that after the fact. But we shall see.